I'm, I'm, do I call you Mr. Blair or Prime Minister Blair? In America, you, know, you keep your title after office, and in Britain, you don't. I'm not quite sure as two Brits on, on, on what we should, what should actually yeah, say. What should we do about that? <laughs> <laughs> actually, the worst thing about it is, is, is that when I first came to America after I left office, and they carry on calling you Prime Minister, and my staff tried to say to me, Paul, no, because then parts of the British media said, he insists on being called, he was obviously not got over the fact that he's no longer Prime Minister. <laughs> so my staff would say to people, no, you shouldn't call him Prime Minister. And Americans think, God, he's taken it so badly, he can't even hear the words. <laughs> uh, so I think we... Matthew, we'll improvise. Matthew and Tony. Matthew eh? and Tony. Okay. Right, there we are. Um, <laughs> A bit of informality. <laughs> and we're here primarily to talk about your new life rather than your old life in British politics, although I guess from today's perspective, your timing on getting out was pretty wonderful. Um, <laughs> may not have seemed like that at the time, but uh, anyway. Well, uh, what Carry I, on. <laughs> <laughs> should the rest of the world take part in what's going on in Iran at the moment, or how should, how should we in the rest of the world take part in that? Well, it's difficult, isn't it, because you want to stand up for people who are basically who you sympathize with. On the other hand, I think President Obama's right in the sense you've got to be extremely careful, otherwise actually your intervention simply gets used against those who are, um, who are demonstrating. But, you know, I think by focusing on it, just by letting people in Iran know that the world is watching and the world is is in a sense, as I'm sure they feel, in, in solidarity with the people there. I think that in itself does a lot. Uh, last week, my week began with a visit to Gaza, and my week ended in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. Got all the good places to go to. Um, and I just reflected on those two places the source of so much conflict, the place of so much division. And yet, in each place, the majority of people there want to live in peace. Our task is to help them do so. Our task is to understand that without creating that more just world, they're unlikely to get the chance of doing so. So that's what I do in my new life. It's rather different, but actually it's rather exciting. And I may have a little less power, but who knows in time, I may have a little more influence. The, the, the critical thing, I mean, I should imagine some people here at least have been um, to, to, to Israel and the Palestinian territory. I think one of the most interesting things is when you, you um, if you go to Mount Nebo on the Jordan side, on the Jordan side of the River Jordan, where Moses is supposed to have looked out, out over the Promised Land, and you stand on, on Mount Nebo, you can actually see right across the West Bank to the lights of Jerusalem in the distance, and occasionally you can even see further than that. And it's not a great distance from Jerusalem out to the sea. So this is a small strip of land. And that is absolutely critical to understanding the problems that both sides have got. Because in that small strip of land, if you're not s sure that you've got a secure neighbor, you know, life is impossible. Um, likewise, you know, for the Palestinians, they've got to be sure that if this is this small strip of land, they've got the run of it. So that's, and that's what I'm working on. And um, now that Senator Mitchell's got involved, this is very good. You know, we work together over Northern Ireland and, you know, we're going to give it a go. Is there anything you've heard or seen um, from the next generation of young Israelis and Palestinians that make you hopeful for peace? Yes. Um, a lot, actually. I mean, there's an organization, in fact, called uh, One Voice, which is um, an organization of young Israelis and young Palestinians. Uh, and I used to say in the Northern Ireland context, there was a group of people who were called the Women's Coalition. And they were women from all different parts of the communities in Northern Ireland, Catholic, Protestant, etc. 
And they used to come and see you, and you'd think, they're so reasonable. And then your political advisor would say to you, yep, but they don't get any votes. Um, and these one-voice young people, you know, you sit down with them, and Israelis and Palestinians, they're there together, and I, I met some of them in East Jerusalem just, just the other month. And you think, they're so reasonable. I mean, uh, and then people say, yep, yeah, but do they have real support within their political systems? But the, <clears throat> the answer is, there are really good young people. Um, do you feel now that um, that war in particular increased is the worst kind of Islamic fundamentalism, or do you think it actually may have started to reverse it? Or? Yeah, this is where I think you've got to be really careful. I think one of the single biggest problems we've had in dealing with this issue everywhere is the idea that somehow we provoked it. You know, we didn't provoke it. September the 11th was in response to what exactly? You know, when people say, well, it's Iraq that caused this extremism or Afghanistan, you know, that's my point. The roots are a lot deeper. And let's be very clear about this, that even if you completely disagree with the decisions that, that President Bush took or I took, there is no excuse for driving car bombs into crowded markets and killing the 50 people that happen to be around that bomb when it, when it explodes. And incidentally, the people that these people are killing are their fellow Muslims. So, you know, I just think you, you can agree or disagree with those decisions, but the responsibility for the terrorism and the extremism lies with the terrorist and extremist, not with anybody else. Actually, just after I left office, I went to see a, um, I went to see a, f a friend of mine who's a, a, a business guy in, in, in London, who's a, who's a sort of cockney, uh, and um, from, from the East End, and, and he's always gives me good advice. And so I said to him, um, look, I've got three things that I'm going to do in my, in my new life. He said, oh, yeah? He said, what's that, mate? And uh, I said, well, the first thing is I, I'd like to be involved in peace between Israel and Palestine. He said, I wouldn't try that, mate. They all hate each other. <laughs> um, he said, what's the second thing? I said, uh, well, I'd actually like to bring the religious face of the world uh, together. He said, oh, my God, he said... <laughs> So what's the third thing? And I said, well, I'd like to try my hand a bit of business. He said, oh, thank God. He said, oh, you've gone crazy there for a minute. Uh, well, I think on that optimistic note, we will end. Um, and thank you very, very much. Thank you.